Good day folks. Today on the bench I'm going to tie you up my chromie enticer. Here's a little fly that uh, kind of popped out of the box unexpectedly when we are up uh, on the skeena fishing the, the lower end and Diane grabbed a, this fly out of the box one day and gave it a try. She was into a nice steelhead right away and wasn't long we had about, I don't know, six or seven fairly quick, steady action anyway, so this fly did deserve some attention. I tied it more of a kind of an anchovy style fly and uh, it's got a lot of movement and uh, back I guess maybe the water was just dirty enough that it stood out a little better or whatever it was. I've used it several times uh, over the years and it's uh, been a great producer for us. I've mentioned this new color to a lot of my steelhead buddies. I said I think one of the new New colors out there is white, and they all kind of looked at me kind of cross-eyed, but because we're all used to the pinks, purples, blacks, and blues, so forth for steelhead. But this little fly here has produced quite well. So I'm just going to go over the materials. I've never shared this with anybody, so this is the first time anyone's seen it. Um, I'm going to start with a size one. This is a Gamagatsu T10. It's a heavy salmon fly hook with an up eye. And on front of that, I'm going to put on some uh, medium silver cone heads. The thread I'm going to use today is going to be uh, Danville's 210 denier. It's a very heavy uh, flat wax nylon thread. And we're going to use some uh, tinsel on this, size 12, gold silver mylar actually, not tinsel, it's mylar. I'm going to use um, some different material on the body. I'm going to use some polar bear, regular now over the years I've been tying with polar bear and I always seen this under fur that fur is just too good to throw away. There's got to be some use for it and I started using it on uh, some different flies and it's it's good. I just have the under fur and I just throw it in my blender and away you go and I mean what can you say more about seal fur or polar bear. It's We're lucky up here in Canada that we can use it. I'm going to use some uh, bluish green polar flash for the topping. I'm going to use some white marabou blood quill. We're going to use a couple plumes for that. And on the collar, I'm going to use some Palmer chenille, medium pearl Palmer chenille. And also on the collar, just under that, I'm sorry I should have went in order, but I just get some long mallard flank. Let's give a little accent, a little speckled appearance on there. So we'll get a hook in the vise, tie you one of these up. Yeah, it's come you think outside the box, sometimes you'd be surprised what we all learn, and that's the nice thing about fishing and fishing with other people and we all have ideas, we see what works and put more rods in the water, we can always check new things out. I'm dressing the hook a lot here with a thread. I'm going to grab some of my mylar, tie that in gold side up at the rear, put that in my keeper there. Now those of you that are using standard vices, which most of you do, that's fine, use them for years, still do. Um, you could use a dubbing loop right here right now is what I would do but I can use my rotary vise. I can dub this uh, polar bear on quite thick. I want it quite thick on there, quite bulky. So I just really covering a lot my thread. It's, it's got a super lot of material on there. It comes out on, I got to tighten that up a little bit more. There we go. I come to the rear and then I just start working my way ahead. Cover the shank, got lots, lots of that under fur from the polar bear on there. It's great stuff. Okay, not very pretty, but we're not done yet. Now I'm going to pull my mylar, that silver, take some wide turns in here, get some good segmentation. I dress it up quite a bit, looks a lot prettier now, don't it? And I'll uh, 
make sure that's tied down good. It's one thing with that flat thread, it doesn't grab as good, so you might want to take some extra wraps. All right, now I want to grab myself a wire brush or picker. I can use a bodkin or whatever, but get this, get hung up in there. I get pretty aggressive on this. I want some of that polar bear coming out. That gets in the water. That looks really, really good. And if you want, you can brush it back a little bit. I can use a bigger brush sometimes for this, heavier materials. There's a big long polar bear in, hair in there yet. Okay, so that looks really good in the water. You can, I'm going to make some streamers with that a little later. I'll show you some nice streamers for big rivers, trout. That'll make a very nice body. We'll see it a little more than the, on this pattern. Okay, now I want to make sure I get some nice, I want to select some good blood quill out of these. You want good blood quill plumes. So there's one right there. There's another one right there. And two is usually all I need to put on here. If it's a little bit of a weaker quill, make sure it's long and fluffy. A good blood quill. You want to make sure you, you select your marabou. And I'll, I'm cutting this back. This tip is fairly strong there. It's not going to... I want to cut it back just so it's thick, but not. I can still turn it on that around the shank of the hook. And I, I'm tying that in at a 45 or at a 90 degree angle from the shank. That's really the secret of doing this marabou. Some, you can put a ball of something in behind to help it stand out, but I want this marabou to breathe. All these enticer series flies that I do are, are very breathable flies. The more movement I can create in my flies, the better. I just, when they get in the water, I just want to see them swim and really move and pulsate. That really looks good to a fish. A lot of marabou gets lashed down on a shank and then they end up just looking like a stick coming through the water. I want them to breathe. I'm going to do the same with this plume right here, just ahead of it. Catching barely at the tip behind the cone. Let me tie that back just a little bit. There we go. Get the tip in there. There we got it. Get some good, get a good bite on it. Now I'll make sure I just preen my plumes back, my marabou back as I'm wrapping. Take a little time on this. The movement is the key. There. So we have that. So you can see that just it really wants to breathe in the water. It's it's super. When it's not under tension and free drifting, a lot of times we're drifting along rivers. That will really, really work well. That'll breathe super nice. So now I'm going to come in for the uh, blue-green polar flash. I really like the polar flash material. It's got it's nice and soft. It also breathes very easily. And uh, it's got a lot of glint to it. It's, it's not overpowering. It's not like a crystal flash. I actually got a little more on there than I want. I don't want to overpower the, the design, the fly too bad. So go in here about halfway. And then we'll just tie that on the top. I just fold it out around my thread. And we're on the top. And then I kind of come and tease it back. See if I got about the right amount on there. Oh, maybe I want to add a little more. Could have left it, I guess, originally. I just go around the thread again. And I'm coming off a little bit at an angle there. I'm just getting too little. It's covering the top really nice. And when that's wet, you'll see it really does look like an anchovy coloration more so I would say. 
And that was really Diane's idea when she pulled us out of the box. She said these steelhead had just been out in the, in the ocean eating bait fish out there, so maybe they'll still think that way. So they're, they were imprinted for sure. So we're going to come in here now with a um, flank from the mallard. And I use the biggest, the longest flanks I can get for this collar. It's a little tricky to work with, but just adds a little bit to it, in my opinion. Cut the tip off. Make sure I got a couple good turns in there. Get my hackle player. I like to use a spring loaded one when I'm working with these kind of hackles. I can manage them so they don't turn on me when my hackle players these are easier to control. I'm just going to basically fold my hackle back and it doesn't take much. I just put a little on there. It looks kind of dressed the fly up a little bit. Put a few, couple, about a turn and a half on there. That's good. And you spread that out. It's really nice when you use uh, some of my other foxy enticers and that. I'm going to be using some some really uh, nice collars on that with the other um, Lady Amherst. But I didn't want to use that on here. I want this, this fly's got to remain very, very soft. So yeah, that's the way I originally put it on there and this other fly that I showed you earlier. Uh, where is it now? I put the collar of the uh, medium chenille on the front, the Palmer chenille. That's an option. I, I, this is the way I tried it originally. It's the way I got it on the vise. Right now I didn't have that Palmer chenille. This is this is the fly we use right out of the gate, right from the start, and we still do. And uh, I just want to catch that off. I don't want to tie that marabou down. And I get a good whip finish on here. There. And that's it. So it's a very, very simple, easy little fly to tie, uh, easy fly to fish, and it was quite a quite a surprise, and it still still works well to this day. So here's a fly that you want to maybe give it a try. It looks great on the water. When it's wet, it breathes well. Nice and small. That underbody will once it gets wet. You'll see that a little bit. That's a nice underbody on there. So. All the best to you and happy steelheading and hope you find white the new color for you too when we uh, start chasing these chromies. They're, uh, they're beautiful fish. Those of us that get the fish steelhead are, are very, very fortunate. It's, a, it's kind of a sport all on its own for sure. So thanks for watching uh, Sport Fishing on the Fly on the Bench. We'll catch you again soon. Thanks for watching. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca and if you would like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.